But anyway, we pretty much uh, a lot of the questions. I just don't want to miss someone here. If driving a old Lola well required proficiency with the Hewland, and driving a turbo relied on an understanding of lag, what special skills were required to do well in a 917K aside from wanting to be in the car to start with? Was there anything more better than, did you like the synchro transmission? No. Did you want turbos? <laughs> you know, I mean. No, I mean, of course, driving a turbo in those days, um, there was tremendous throttle like. So a turbo 91710, turbo Canamcos, had tremendous throttle like. So it wasn't like driving a normal 917K, which was a normal car with 620 horsepower, about 1800 pounds weight. And because you had instant throttle response and instant torque, you could balance the car in the corner. So you balance it with the throttle. Uh, and so but the turbo, no, you, you had to judge when you could open the throttle, when you were part way around the corner. Let's take, uh, let's say, turn one at mid-Ohio, taken in third gear, that's about 100 miles an hour. You come whistling in, in a turbo, and you turn, and as you turn, the car's like, like this, and then, when you're part way around the corner, you open the throttle wide open, judging when the car's going to be straight, and the 1,000 horsepower comes in. And so it's a completely different technique. Now today I think there's no turbo lag in the cars, so it's a completely opposite. But driving those thousand horsepower turbo Canam cars was something different, you know, it was. Yeah, and you got to drive the car with Vasek Pollock, which is a car you recently, a few weeks ago, drove at Goodwood. uphill at Goodwood, which is the OPA that we restored back in the day. And that was a car that scared the bejeebers out of you one day at Riverside as it was converted from the PA to a turbocharged car. So yes. you got to view it on both sides and in a car that might not have been as worthy as the others because it kept on being fixed and fixed and fixed. In 1973, Vasek Polak rang me and said, Brian, you come to Willow Spring and test 91710 and race at Laguna Seca and Riverside. So I go to Willow Springs and there are two 91710s. Jody Schechter was his regular driver, and there's another one there, and I drive both cars, and I say to Vashek, when I come in, I say, Vashek, the uh, car of Schechter is a little bit steadier on the road, it's a bit firmer, and the same is same. So Riverside, Friday afternoon practice, whistling through turn eight at about 200 miles an hour, with the wall of turn nine ahead of you, something broke in the rear suspension. So I come in the pits, they left the back, and it's broken a rear suspension support tube, an aluminum piece of tubing. Well, the same thing happens on Saturday. So now this is another tube, not the same one, which have been repaired. And Sunday, I didn't sleep again, you know, on Saturday <laughs> night, Sunday morning. I say, Dashek, I don't think the car's safe. I don't think I should drive. He said, Brian, the guys work all night. The car is perfect, but if you don't wish to drive, that's okay. So, so. Now I feel bad. The guilt so, trip. The so, whole guilt trip. So I say, okay, I'll drive it. I'm lying second uh, to Mark Donahue in the 917.30, a much superior beast, which I drove the following year at Mid Ohio. And in the same turn eight, at 200 miles an hour, something really broke. I didn't spin. I just missed the wall on the outside of turn nine, come in the pits. What's the matter? What's the matter? I lift the back. They lift the back. And I see for the first time that the bottom rear suspension mounting point is a single wishbone like this with a single mounting point. 91710s have parallel links like this with a dual mounting. So I said to Vashik, I said, Vashik, why has it only got single mounting point like this? He says, this is Joe Siffert Canam card. It's normal 917. I change, I put body and 1,000 horsepower engine in it. I said, oh, great, thanks. <laughs> That ended that series. Well, we ended up buying the car. Randolph Townsend put the car in two pieces at Laguna Seca, where Alvin Springer of Porsche Motorsport uh, was a crew chief of. And Alvin told me that he had to finish cutting the car in half to get it in the transporter because it was so twisted that it was just easier to cut the car in half. Now, I later bought the car from Kerry Morris, who ends up with the car through to Randolph Townsend. And then we restored it for Collier. And it's going to be in a story here, but Bill Ouser writes a story for Porsche Panorama. Yes. And it's about to be in a story. And let's just see how much he writes in the story about that car. As it ends up, it's a lovely piece now. It, did it go up the hill okay? It's great. So, yeah, fantastic. So, 
It, 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 we did updates on the car when we restored it. We, we restored it more like a 917-10 than the PA. And we actually did it so both two bodies would fit on the car. We bought the original body that still said Brian on it when you raced wow. in the Riverside. Wow. And we have that body today. We really? ended up getting it from Collier. But we left it as the PA, but we made the car so it was convertible, where it could change from the PA to the 10 turbo in honor of Vasek Polak and Brian Redden, because it's such a great story. And I knew the story 20 something years ago when we restored it, because you had well, told Well, several me. years ago, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I got a call from the Collier Museum. Brian, we're taking this 917 PA to Goodwood for the hill climb, which is what we just did three weeks ago. And I said, bring it to my Targa club event in Palm Beach at the end of February and we'll give it a run round. So they bring it, I go out in it, I do the usual thing, two slow laps, slowish laps, come in, they check for oil leaks, they check the wheels are tight, I go out, and on the third corner, which I'm not at full speed, but I'm going probably over 100 miles an hour, I can whistling down to call it, put the brakes on, uh, the right truck wheel disappears into the distance, and so... You know, quick reaction, I think, ah, the left front is still there, I can turn right. So I, I did this, and as I did that, the left front flew off, Oops. and I went head on into the barrier, hard. <laughs> so they are pretty safe. I think we keep bringing this up yeah. of how safe these 917s really are.